Okay, this is going to be data recovery case 477613. Uh, this is an actual customer case that was sent in to us. Um, it is a 3 terabyte Seagate hard drive. Uh, we have our parts drive here if needed. Um, but basically what we have with this case is, um, it's a little bit different than some of the others we've done, is the drive has actually already been opened. You can see where um, the label's been peeled back and that part of the sticker holding uh, that covers the screw that is mounted to the head stack assembly is actually um, exposed as well. And it makes sense because the customer said that this drive was actually working perfectly fine one day. Uh, they shut the computer off that night, they came back in the next morning, and the drive was clicking. Um, at that point they said they shut it down immediately and contacted another data recovery company um, who then came back to them a few weeks later saying that there was nothing that could be done to recover the data. Um, a couple of things with that is the fact that A, the reputation of the company that they sent it to um, is not all that great and that was the one thing that was somewhat worrisome whenever they contacted us and told us that they'd sent it to them. Um, you know, once I gave them just a quick search that they could do on Google about that company, uh, they immediately felt like they made a huge mistake uh, by sending it to them. But, you know, that's not their fault. That's just the way it happens. Um, a lot of companies are really good at marketing themselves, um, but they don't really live up to the promises, and sometimes they can make the situation worse. So, anyway, uh, when they couldn't do anything with it, they had the drive shipped back to them, they contacted us, and they sent it to us. I'm not guaranteeing that we can recover this data either, uh, mainly because with these um, particular families of drives, you'll see the model on these that will be ST3000DM001 for the 3 terabyte drives. Uh, they also have 2 terabyte drives by Seagate that are ST2000DM001. If you happen to be using one of those drives actively, uh, at this point in time and haven't had a problem, I would highly advise um, that you back up that drive immediately. Um, with these particular drives, these family drives, what will happen is, is exactly what happened to this customer. The drive will work fine one minute, the next minute it doesn't. Um, no matter what happens, whenever a company goes through and tries to swap out the heads, the heads immediately become damaged or they may work in a degraded state for a short period of time before they finally fail. And what we are finding is there's some sort of flaw in the head alignment, something like that, that is allowing the head to contact um, the platter surface. And what happens is, is the head will score the platter, and then at that point um, the drive is just no longer usable. So it doesn't happen to all of them, but it does happen to a lot of them um, when they have that type of symptom. And you'll actually find that there are some companies that won't even take this family drive in to even work with them. So just a thing to keep in mind if you have uh, this particular family drive, or like I said, it's that ST3000DM001 or ST2000DM001. Not saying it's going to fail, not saying Seagate is a crappy company or anything like that. Um, just saying that when these do fail, and all hard drives are destined to failure at some point, um, they tend to wreak a lot of havoc on the platters and make it very, very difficult, if not impossible, to recover the data a lot of times. So just uh, keep that in mind. But um, at this point, we are going to uh, go over to our flow hood area. It's a class 100 um, clean room area. Um, to where we can open the drive safely and without worried about any contamination. Um, see if we can see what might have been done with this drive initially. I am not going to power this up at all, um, not knowing really what was done to it, what the condition of the drive is inside, um, not knowing really the full extent of what the problem is even. Um, sometimes we'll put this on a system to where we can see the terminal output, which is when you hook it up and you can read the terminal output, which is um, the system area data that's hidden from end users, 
Um, you can get a good idea of what the problem is ultimately, but I don't even want to do that. I just want to kind of take a peek inside first and see what we're dealing with and then go from there. So we will move on to that phase. Okay, now we have the drive ready to be opened. We do this in an area that's uh, basically, um, it's a flow hood that pushes out highly filtered air. Uh, if you were to do this just out in the open, you'd risk having a lot of dust contamination and things like that. Uh, with this type of setup, you don't actually have to have a full-blown uh, clean room, which is really pointless when it comes to just working on hard drives themselves, um, but you can have an environment that the air is highly purified um, and if you can get into a class 100 or better uh, environment for a hard drive that's open that's fantastic that's really all they need so right now I'm just going through and taking uh, the screws out of the drive I actually have the background noise somewhat muted because the fans that are operating um, are pretty loud so just removed all the screws uh, from the hard drive itself and cracking open the drive for the first time since we've received it and immediately upon looking at it I realize this drive is not going to be recoverable by anyone not just our company but by any company you can see all of the dust and debris that's gathered on the lid of the hard drive itself um, it's really hard to tell in the pictures or in the video here um, how bad the hard drive platter itself is damaged, but all of the platter surfaces are damaged uh, inside there. All of that soot looking material, the dust, is literally the data. That's what used to be the data. That is the material that used to hold the data. You can see how much has been picked up in the filter here. Flip it over and you can really tell how dirty that is. Um, there is a ferromagnetic coating that is on the platter surfaces and that is what stores essentially the magnetic uh, switching the ones and zeros if you will and again it's hard to pick up in the video here how bad the scoring is on the platter and how widespread it is but this recovery is absolutely 100 percent impossible by anyone um, and even here, there's just so much of it that's just accumulated on the uh, case cover lid. So it's hard to know for sure what was done to this drive originally to cause this much damage, but we'll go ahead and post up a couple of pictures as well so you can get a, a closer view of it. This image does a pretty good job of illustrating the amount of damage that occurred to the platter surface. This is a prime example of what we call cascading. Uh, it's when there's probably a major scored area on one of the lower platters that created dust and debris inside the drive that then got trapped underneath the heads of all the remaining platters. And essentially when that dust and contamination is caught between the platter and the head and the platter is rotating, it acts like a grinding wheel and it starts to grind that platter surface down. And the only areas that aren't ground down on this one are the outer diameter where the parking ramp is and the inner diameter where the heads don't reach. Okay, just to go ahead and close out this case, I um, wanted to go into a little bit more detail. Uh, as you can see in the picture that we uh, just showed, uh, the scoring is widespread across the entire platter surface. Um, the only areas that the head doesn't actually touch on the platter on these drives is the very inner ring, uh, the very inner diameter, which is clean still, and then the very outer diameter where the parking ramp um, actually covers. But you can see the rest of it just looks kind of fogged over, um, very cloudy, and that's in comparison to a good platter, which is what this looks like. You know, nearly a perfect mirror finish. And here, what you have is the magnetic substrate that's coated on the um, the platter itself, which is what actually holds the data, is um, essentially wiped away. Um, it's much worse on the lower platters, as I mentioned. Um, can't get a good picture of them here. It's just one of those things we scoped and looked at inside there. 
um, to look at the lower the lower platters, but you can see by the amount of contamination in the filter here just how dirty that is. That you know that right there is essentially the customer's data. I mean, for lack of a, <laughs> a better way to put it, as opposed to a good condition drive, this is what the filter should look like. So. Basically what happens is, is you have a drive where, in this case here, you know, I, I tend to believe the customer when they said, they were pretty emphatic about the drive started clicking um, as soon as they turned it on uh, the following morning after having been working perfectly the day before and didn't do anything more to it because it had their critical business files and things like that on there when they heard that um, they immediately shut it off and contacted someone who then put them in touch with this other data recovery company um, it kind of you know I kind of hinted at you know the the company that they sent it to is pretty well known in our industry as having a bad reputation and um, this is one of the reasons why um, we've seen drives come in before that had been to them before you know prior and just really sketchy work being done and um, things like this happening to where it essentially makes a bad situation that much worse. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why even if you don't send a drive to a company like ours, uh, there's other companies out there, there's Drive Savers, there's OnTrack, uh, there's DTI, there's CBL, there's Gilware, a lot of good companies that are out there uh, that won't you know, put your data at further risk. Um, you know, of course we would, you know, love it if everybody sent their drives to us, but we know that the reality is, you know, there are other good companies out there and um, we highly recommend them and we're not um, immune to actually referring customers to them uh, if for some reason we can't recover the data just to get a second opinion. So in this case here though, I believe it could have been um, possibly just for the extent of the damage um, possibly an error on their part uh, just on what was done because even with these drives being prone to platter scoring as I'd mentioned earlier uh, it never gets to the point where it's this excessive for just a uh, short run time uh, with the with the drive clicking uh, you may get a scratch somewhere on the platter a single scratch but you never get it to where it looks like the whole platter surface is wiped away um, so anyway, it just it kind of brings home just making sure that you do your homework, making sure that you research the company that you are going to plan on using for your data recovery uh, services, making sure that they're a reputable company, a company that doesn't charge you anything if the data is not recoverable on it. Um, you know, the only time we ever charge attempt fees are in cases like this when a drive's already been opened, because we don't know what's been done to the drive initially. Uh, we don't know what environment it was opened up in. We don't know what recovery attempts have been made. So it just kind of, you know, covers us for the extra time that we have involved with it. And you'll find that with most companies where they get a drive that's already been opened. So, but other than that, though, if a drive has not been opened, not been tampered with, um, there's any reputable company is going to either recover the data or not charge you if they can. So, again, just looking at the difference between these two, you can see it is a stark contrast between the two just you can see the reflectiveness of this platter compared to this one that's just really hazy so that is what happens when the uh, heads come in contact with the platter starts to score those are one of the only times that data is not recoverable um, the heads only float just a few nanometers above the platter surface and on a drive of this capacity it's about five nanometers which is only about the width of two strands of DNA that's how tight the air gap is so any imperfections in this platter like we have here that are widespread um, are just going to impact and damage any replacement heads that are installed and that's if the platter was still readable in other areas this right here though with it being so widespread across the entire board this drive no matter what we did to it there's no way it's going to calibrate no way it's going to become ready no way the data is going to become accessible so this is a good example of a drive that is not recoverable unfortunately but um, it kind of illustrates what we're talking about when we say you know hey when there's platter damage that's usually one of the only times they're not recoverable and this is a pretty decent example of that we've seen worse but um, 
This is a pretty good recent example anyway. Uh, if you need more information about our services though, visit acsdata.com. If you'd like more information, maybe get a quote on uh, a drive that you have that you might need to have recovered, uh, go ahead and give us a call 1-800-717-8974. Um, you could also just go straight to our website there at acsdata.com and if you want to send a drive in for a free evaluation, uh, there's a link towards the top of each page that says start your recovery. and It'll walk you through the process of creating your case and our ticket system, giving you the case number, the shipping address, packing instructions, everything. Once we get the drive in, we do the initial evaluation, absolutely no charge for that. Um, you can decide if you want to proceed any further or not after that point. Um, if you decide to proceed, like I said, as long as the drive has not been opened, if it's not recoverable for some reason, there's no charge for the attempt. Um, not all drives are in this condition, but you know, there's nothing, this right here has no bearing on our ability to recover data from failed hard drives. This is just a physical impossibility. This would be like if you wrote your name on a piece of wood and sanded it off. Um, you know, really, there's no way to put that back to the way it was originally. And that's how it is whenever the platters are scored. So, uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at this and peering into a little bit of what we see here on a daily basis. Stay tuned for um, some more videos. Be sure to subscribe to us so you get notifications for that. And, uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, email us. Um, contact us on our website at acsdata.com, whatever you like to do. And thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.